I, I just made my own choices and uh, built my own business model, <laughs> I guess, if I would use a term like that. I paved it on my own. This is, I, thought, like, this is a I love this video. This is a that I think you can marry uh, with gaming, political commentary. I paved it on my own. Paved it on my own. I paved it on my own. Uh, uh, shout, out, shout out to Destiny, by the way. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot to say, yeah. Oh, you, know, you know them, okay. Cool, yeah. cool. When I watched that video, I was like, oh, that's cool. So we have, like, Why is X even watching this on yeah, stream? Destiny, Destiny, the reason I know about Triax as well. If Destiny was my roommate, I'd get him late all the time. Steven, was trap, trap. I met Destiny. I'm not kidding. When we were playing, I was playing black, uh, Blackout with oh. Destiny off stream. And as I was in the call, and he kept saying, yo, that's Hassan. I thought it was Hassan from Twitch at the time. So I thought he was my boss, right? I was being nice and really chill with him. And then. He was like, no, it's just, it's just, no, it's, it's has right. one S or whatever. Happy. Uh, just like, he has like four viewers. And I was like, what the fuck? I was like, yo. Uh, DMing me I could be wrong, on Discord but is saying, I do not hey, you know what? Women you don't have a place to live, buddy. Like, you can come stay with me. It's okay. What a good guy. Destiny is foot skin. a great guy. Here, for all of you guys, is the, here, Fish and Destiny playing. Okay, wait, hey, listen, I love you. What? Um, I told a friend that I would play a game with them, and I'd get ready for that. Oh, okay. Listen, don't worry, you're gonna get all my videos on watch you watch it, are gonna go your screen. Oh, okay. okay, I mean, no, it's fine. I wanted to watch it with you, but it's cool, dude. Friendship is, is uh, just dead, I guess. <laughs> oh, Speedo McGee is your fan that gave me 200 subs. Okay, I don't need that. <laughs> Alright, what is this? Destiny scared because it made him emotional? No! Anytime I cover, like, more than two se I don't think- I think over the past two weeks, we mentioned a song, like, twice, because it came up with this drama shit. And every time any clip of me with Hassan goes onto the fucking LSF, right now the- Right now we're in the ocean of Hassan. Hassan's, like, up good on LSF. And all of his little fucking dick writers and everything, Destiny talking talk about Hassan constantly. Bro, I've- God, I wish- I wish I talked about Hassan constantly, okay? All I've been doing for the past eight months is fucking red pill dog shit content. I'm talking about body counts? And that men are different than women. That's what I talk about constantly, okay? Fuck me, all right? I'd rather obsess over Hassan than the dog shit, boring fucking red pill matrix AIDS inducing content that I've been doing, okay? Jesus. What's up, Linus? Is me racing out of bed for our front row seat to my life's work vanishing before my eyes. Linus tech tips, deleted. Tech links, toasted. Tech cookie, gone. The good news is that if you're watching this, we're back online. The bad news is that this kind Muda of- Muda in chat. Oh, what's up? You're from the Some Ordinary Gamers podcast, right? <laughs> attack has become so commonplace on YouTube that when we sat down to prepare this video, it took us less than 10 seconds to find a huge channel that was dealing with exactly the same thing in that moment. Let's talk then about the motive for these attacks. Oh, the wait, did changes. I say some ordinary gamer or gamer from Mars? I don't even know what I'm saying. Why don't you guys just have, why don't you just put your fucking name as your fucking thing? What did I, I don't even know what I just said. I'm trying to listen to this. Why is your name some ordinary gamers? Why don't I just name yourself Muda or Muda? Fuck you guys. This is that we and YouTube need to make and how we can all work together as a community to educate and protect each other from bad actors. Oh, and to tell you about our sponsor, Dbrand. Oh God, not Dbrand. Today, really? Oh, actually no, they've got something good. Stay tuned. What? <laughs> Why would they say today? Why don't they want to promote Dbrand today? The fireworks started a little after three in the morning when the Linus Tech Tips account was renamed to Tesla and started streaming a podcast-style recording Based. of self-proclaimed techno-king Elon Musk discussing cryptocurrency. This in and of itself is not a scam. D-Brand always trolls them. They have shit posts for ads. Ah, oh, gotcha. a scam website that claimed that for every one Bitcoin you sent, they would return double, complete with fake transaction records showing other users definitely getting huge payouts. Now, many of you will know this already. And if you do, give yourself a cookie. But after you log into a website and your credentials have been validated, that site will provide your web browser with a session token. How are they getting the token? This allows your browser, and by extension you, to stay logged in when you restart your browser and go to access that site again. That cookie is stored locally on your device. Yeah, right. How would someone else get it? Well, that's where we made a mistake. Uh-oh. Someone on our team, and I'm not saying it was Colton, downloaded what appeared to be a sponsorship offer from a potential partner. Oh, boring, boring. One thing that I've heard is if you're dealing with somebody that's very skilled, if physical access to device means it might always be compromised depending on your level of encryption, but you almost always assume that you're fucked. And then second thing is, if you're gonna download and run a program, your shit is fucked. 
wipe your shit, format the fuck out of it, fucking smash the drive with a fucking sledgehammer, destroy your motherboard! I don't even know if shit can fucking bury itself into the UEFI these days, I'm not sure if it, if it hides in your firmware chips. Fuck, but this, I thought there was gonna be some crazy session token hijacking, some insane shit going on here, but it's just gonna be somebody downloaded and ran a stupid program. But I don't know, we'll see what happens. It was an innocent enough mistake for the most part. The email came from a legitimate looking source and it didn't raise any immediate red flags like being full of grammatical errors. So they extracted the contents, launched what appeared to be a PDF containing the terms of the deal, then presumably when it didn't work, went about the rest of their day. What happened in the background took place over the course of just 30 seconds. The malware accessed all user data from both of their installed browsers, Chrome and Edge, including every- Can you launch malicious programs from a PDF? Is that possible? Do those exploits exist or is that a functionality of PDFs? Can PDFs launch programs? I have no idea, I'm not sure. I, I was unaware of that if that's true. PDF payloads? PDF supports JavaScript? It wasn't a PDF. It probably wasn't a PDF. Yeah, I wonder if it was like pdf.exe or something. People keep saying that PDFs can execute like executable code. I don't know if that's true. Everybody, say, everybody tried to say that. I don't know if that's actually true. If a PDF can launch an executable. PDF itself is an executable format, is it? I'm trying to think for the Windows UAE, I've, I think I've turned mine off, I probably shouldn't. But like when you go to open a PDF, it doesn't normally block up and ask you if you wanna open it, right? But for a program, it should, no? Destiny, there are occasionally exploits for PDF whether they can contain the exe. Well, that's what I was asking. Are there like zero days out there with PDF that allows them to run like malicious code on a computer? Can PDFs contain viruses? Yes, they can because PDFs are one of the most universally used file type. Hackers and bad actors can find waste. You see it's normally harmless files. Malwarefox states that PDF files can clearly be able to execute code on your device. It's apparently the part of the code that makes the document signable that is a problem. As a cybersecurity pro, MFA is a blessing. Yeah, okay, fuck. What somebody just linked, this seems more like what's going on. But but what the fuck do I know? You know? YouTubers are emailed a file labeled to resemble something legitimate, like a business proposal or invoice or some other document, but instead of it being a .pdf or other legitimate file type for what it is trying to pretend to be, it is a .scr file. Now, screensaver files do contain executable code that somebody can use to access everything in your machine. I, I think it's basically like if you run an exe on your machine and you give it authorization to run, you're, everything is fucked. They basically own your ass at that point. Um, as I say, are normal screensaver files, but they're just executable files with a different extension. So the goal is to get somebody to open the SCR file, which infects a computer with malware, then steals a bunch of information, including the website. Yeah, at that point, you're fucked. I think that feels like what's probably happening. That'd be my guess, but what do I know? But I think that is what's happening, given that he's not specifying that it was actually a real PDF that ran malicious code somehow or whatever. But... PDF can contain malicious payload. <laughs> JavaScript is a programming language that puts functionality on the web. Most websites and web browsers have some kind of JavaScript element that's used to execute code. No, hold on. Wait, okay, I'm not a programmer, but this is, hold on. JavaScript elements could execute code. I don't think a local JavaScript thing can just download and run a full program on your computer, no? Like it should be, it should, like, yeah, I think it should be sandboxed to the individual application. I don't think you could just use, but I don't know, Never mind. Everybody always says, everybody in chat always has these links to these things like, oh, well, theoretically this, blah, 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 blah. But every single time any of these attacks happen, it's always like a SRC file. It's always like something. Dustin, you can embed a .exe in the PDF and then execute it with JavaScript. PDF embedding attack. Has this ever been used? I feel like I never, ever, ever heard. Like, I feel like I always get linked these exotic things. It's like how you can use magnets to read zeros and ones off of drives that have been wiped 32 times and theoretically the FBI. And it's like, like it's one of these, like in theory it could work, but I feel like I, I feel like it's always just like social engineering or spear phishing or, uh, or, or these like PDFs that are actually like SRC or EXCs or whatever, but I don't know. Embedding files, it's very easy to embed the kind of file on a PDF. I mean, every document includes the embedded files name tree along with support from uh, most PDF libraries, provide something to this, we'll examine PDF, uh, opening files, PDF, um, actually open it. Put a script in the PDF. In our case, we want to add a document level script. The script will execute. As soon as PDF is open, fortunately, PDF uh, supports so we simply add a JavaScript object. With, uh, our JavaScript payload is pretty simple. We must add a single call to export that object, a function provided to PDF reader. Function takes an object with two parameters. 
run as soon as PDF is open, right? Well, not quite. Unfortunately, there's a bit more to it. Adobe Reader and most other readers will prevent the launch of common executable files, for example, exe, js, vba, well, evading the blacklist. There are many ways to evade the blacklist, such as Microsoft Word documents with malicious macros embedded in them. But recently, researchers discovered that another kind of file could be used. Settings-ms, explained in the spectrum. XML documents pointing to specific places in the Windows 10 settings GUI. However, they contain a field called deep link, which can contain any arbitrary executable, which will be run when this is run. Okay, so it sounds like, it sounds like in order for this to happen, um, there does need to be some kind of exploit available, right? It's not like natively built that PDFs should be able to arbitrarily execute executables, right? That it's relying on some sort of exploit at some point that, that something that's not patched correctly, something that's probably not working as intended, I'm guessing, right? Okay, where were we? Back to this. Everything from locally saved passwords to cookies to browser preferences, giving them effectively an exact copy of those browsers on the target machine that they could export, including, that's right, session tokens for every logged in website. Now, no one should unzip an email attachment. File extensions should always be double checked when you're executing anything. And yeah, so it wasn't, it was not a PDF. You hear this, I love you. It was not a PDF, it was some other, it was an SRC file, I bet. This is the one that I've heard of the most, are people downloading these like screensaver attachment things and that getting fucked up. That's almost for sure what happened. And any file that doesn't do what you expect should raise immediate red flags. I, I can hardly blame a sales rep or a video editor or someone in accounting for not being up on the latest in cybercrime. And I also believe that in a healthy organization, it actually rolls up the hill rather than down. So there's not gonna be any disciplinary actions because the simple truth is that if we had more rigorous training for our newcomers and better processes for following up notifications oh from our God. site wide anti-malware, this could have been easily avoided. Dick Rider. As for why it took so long for us to lock down the account once we knew what was going on, that's another training issue, but this time it was my training. We use a system for our YouTube channels called Content Manager, which theoretically improves security by allowing us to dole out specific channel access roles to our various team members, rather than just sharing the main account credentials with everyone who needs to access it. This made the process of determining the attack vector way more complicated. You could think of it kind of like replacing your one giant vault door with 20 smaller doors, any one of which realistically still gets you into the vault. Now in a perfect world, these smaller doors should have been restricted with less access than we configured, but- Everybody had full access? 2020. <laughs> I hope it is. The bottom line is that- True, bro, no amount of fucking technology will ever get you over a user. Okay, I don't wanna just be, I don't wanna have an insecure, web. it sounds like, I could be wrong by the way, so ignore everything I'm saying if I'm a dumb fuck, but it sounds like they basically have a system that's like, okay, we can dole out limited, limited access to different people across our enterprise um, so that we've got like more security. But instead they just gave basically like fucking like admin to every single member that they doled out access to so that every single account, like nothing was sandboxed and everybody had access to everything. That's what it sounds like. Based. Our disaster response processes need to improve because I realized that I know how to reset the passwords and the access control across all of these channels in Channel Manager. And that is not the sort of thing that you want to be troubleshooting but butt naked Jesus. in the wee hours of the morning in the <laughs> middle of a crisis. My God. In fairness to me, the way that Google handles the intermingling of all their services is not the most intuitive, and both Yvonne and I experienced numerous glitches and timeouts that prevented us from effectively using these tools even once we did figure out how to use them. Which leads us nicely then into the next part of our discussion. I've owned what I did wrong, and now it's time to talk about Google. To their credit, I heard back that someone was aware and working on it at the highest levels, within about half an hour of reaching out to my YouTube rep. And they have seemingly improved their internal tools for managing this sort of thing a lot since the last time around. They Damn. Forms you can fill out, and the partner reps that we've worked with seem to genuinely care. Shout out MC, I'm so sorry this spoiled your spa day. Can you remember the last time Instagram or Snapchat asked you to log in again? Social media platforms, <clears throat> YouTube, excuse me, <laughs> tend to be a lot less aggressive since they want to make using their platforms as frictionless as possible. Now, in fairness, Google does usually require re-authentication when you're changing a password or other security options, or I don't know, when a session token gets reused by a new IP address on the other side of the freaking planet. 
But we've heard from multiple people that this isn't always the case. So the big question is that with Google owning the whole chain here, like start to finish, really, including the bloody web browser, how is this crap not only still possible, but so prevalent? It's time for them to not just ask these questions internally, but come up with real answers for them. Ooh. I think the only group whose response here was perfect was our community. And no, this is not like standing on stage, yeah, I love you guys. And it is. You guys were amazing. Um, prominent members of our forum, whom I've interacted with over the years, reached out to my team directly. Um, upstanding citizens were paying real money out of their own pockets to send super chats, warning stream viewers that the channel was hijacked. And over <laughs> 5,000 of you in the last 12 hours alone subscribed to floatplane.com to show your support and to ensure that you wouldn't miss any of our uploads. Um, really appreciate you all. Uh, oh, our partners at YouTube, um, and of course, you, Dbrand. Oh, something, something. Dbrand with me a lot, yes. But Dbrand jumped at the chance to help us out, and not just help us out by sponsoring the video today, making it so we don't got to worry about how to pay all these guys their overtime, but help us out by setting you guys up with an unprecedented deal. For the first time ever, <gasps> Dbrand is offering a site-wide deal for LTT viewers. What? Just go to, really guys? Shortlinus.com and you will save 15% on any order using code 5FOOT1. That's one word, all one word, F-I-V-E-F-O-O-T-O-W-N-E. We really couldn't do it without all of you. Thanks to you, my team, and yes, even Dbrand. We'll have wow. them linked down below. I'm crying because how beautiful everything is.